Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. Notes with Mr. Jankowski. We're on page 89, 89 of our math notebook, and we only have one page of notes this week. So we're going to take a look at this page, page 89. Now, before I get started, I wanted to give a shout out to a couple students that are in my third period class, uh, Delilah and Mason. They requested shout outs. They've been amazing students this year. Great job. Keep it up. So we're looking at page 89, lesson 12.1 reading scales. We talked about reading scales last week, looking at a graph and understanding what the information on the graph means sometimes requires reading scales that are given to you on the graph and deciphering what the data is meant to uh, tell you. So let's take a look at this and we're going to start off by reading the top. It says the graph below shows the location of a city. It also shows the location of Gary's and Jen's houses. The scale on each axis represents miles. So we've got the X axis, we got the Y axis, and we've got some numbers here represented by miles. And it looks like these are skipping by five. So start at the origin where the city is located and we go west, that's five miles, 10 miles, 15, 20, and so on. Here's Gary's house, here's Jen's house, and there's the city in the center of the origin. One other thing I wanna point out is that we have a compass rose that tells us the uh, direction north, south, east, and west are. That's gonna be important too. So let's take a look and see if we can answer some of these questions. Use the scale to describe Gary's location relative to the city. So this is Gary's location. Let's see if we can find the ordered pair that represents Gary's spot. So if I look here on the x-axis, he's at negative 25. And on the y-axis, his house is at positive 15. Where those points converge is where Gary's house is located. Likewise, we can do the same for Jen. Jen is here. She is located at five on the x-axis and 15 on the y. So when we go down to answer these questions, we already determined this. Each grid line is worth five miles. So if you're starting at zero and you're going east, this is five miles, then 10 miles. That's why the 10, 15 miles, 20, 25, 30. So each grid square is five miles on a side. Gary's house is at negative 25, 15. Negative 25 and 15 on the coordinate grid, which is, well, if we go west, it says, which is blank miles west. West is this way. So from the city, this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 five miles west. And going north, it's 5, 10, 15 miles north. So 25 miles west and 15 miles north. Now, what a lot of students get confused with is this. Obviously, the ordered pair negative 25 shows the distance from zero on the x-axis. But if you were to walk from the city uh, west, 25 miles, although you're going to negative numbers on the uh, left of zero on the x-axis, if you were to actually walk that distance in person, you wouldn't be walking negative numbers, you'd be walking, you know, positive distance in miles. So even though we're going left on the x-axis, in terms of actual distance, 25 miles is how far Gary's house is west of the city. Sorry, there's a loud cart going by that might have been caught on the uh, audio. So what I wanted to point out is this. When you're measuring distance on a uh, coordinate grid or a coordinate plane, you're looking at absolute value. So the absolute value of negative 25 is the same as 25 because you're going 25 miles left west um, regardless of it being negative 25 on the number line. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have questions about that, please ask me or your teacher uh, and uh, they can explain that further. But let's move on. We're gonna go down to the second part of our uh, 
page here where it says Jen's house to describe the location of Jen's house relative to Gary's house. Jen's house is located blank grid squares to the blank of Gary's house. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. Hang on. If I was to travel, let me zoom out so that you can see the whole thing. If I was to travel from Gary's house to Jen's house, if I was just to walk there or ride a bike or whatever, it is one, two, three, four, five, six grid squares to the, if I'm starting at Gary's house and going to the east, so six grid squares to the east. So I'm going to put six grid squares to the east of Gary's house. Now, since each grid square is, oh, we already determined this, each grid square is five miles on a side, her house is six grid squares times five miles, which equals 30 miles from Gary's house. And again, you know, if you're walking from Gary's house to Jen's house, you're moving on the on the X axis uh, going positive, right? You're going to the right, you're moving positive from negative 25 to positive five, but you're still moving one, two, three, four, five, six grid spaces. It's still 30 miles away from Gary's house. 30 miles away from Gary's house. If you walk from Gary's house to Jen's house, it's 30 miles from Jen's house to Gary's house if you walk the other direction. So 30 miles is what, we've, what we're looking at here. From Gary's to Jen's house. All right, so if I continue here and we go down to dig a little deeper. It says, Ted lives 20 miles south and 20 miles west of the city represented on the graph in the example above. I'm going to circle this here. This is important information. This is Ted. He lives 20 miles south and 20 miles west of the city represented on the graph. Now, um, let's find out where that location is. And it uh, looks like they want us to give an ordered pair for that location of Ted's house. So I'm actually going to go back up to the grid and let's see if we can figure this out. So Ted is 30 miles south and 30 miles west. It wasn't 30 or 20, let me go, oh, 20 miles south and 20 miles west of the city center. Okay, so if I start at the city center and I go 20 miles south, that would be, according to the compass rows, down on the y-axis. And this is five miles for each line, so five, 10, 15, 20 right there 20 miles south uh on the y-axis would be there 20 miles west would be on the x-axis is west it's going this way south going that way right 20 miles west on the x-axis would be here and where those points converge is where we find ted's house now where is ted's house located well we can see on the graph, on the x-axis, he's located at negative 20. On the y-axis, he's located at negative 20. Negative 20, negative 20. So that's what I'm going to put down below here for Ted's house. Okay. And we still have one more problem to answer here. His brother, Ned, Ned Flanders perhaps, lives 45 miles north of Ted's house. Give the coordinates of each brother's house. Well, we already got Ted's house. Ned lives 45 miles north of Ted's house. So let's get this circled so that we have that ready to go. 45 miles north of Ted's house. Well, looking at the compass rows, north is up on the y-axis. So I need to go 45 miles north from Ted's house. Now remember, each line is five. So let's count this out. Let's see if we can figure out how or where Ned's location is on the map. I'm going to erase some of these that I drew earlier, free up some space, and let's find that out. So I'm going to use red. I'm going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. This is where Ned's house is at. And the location there is negative 20 on the x-axis and 25 on the y-axis. So Ned is located at negative 20, 
25. And I'm going to put that down for Ned's location of his house. Negative 20, 25. Okay. So this is one of those problems where you have to figure out the first part before you can figure out the second part. But overall, I think that this makes sense. And I think that this is something that you could recognize as being useful in everyday life, especially when in regards to maps or locating a place in a specific area. And um, determining how far that place is from another place on the map. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, ask me those questions, um, ask your teacher. Uh, if you uh, want to rewatch this video, remember you can rewatch it, you can pause it, you can go back and rewind. Um, also, these notes are saved in Google Classroom, so you have access to all of these notes saved there as well if you want to go back and refer to those too. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you in the next video.